Greetings guys, it's Irish here. So I know it's been a while since uh, my last video, a couple weeks, but I've been trying to test out Void Linux and trying to get onto my desktop, which I did. I did have some uh, issues uh, a little bit and I'm still kind of experiencing some issues. So if I can't get those resolved anytime soon, then I'm most likely gonna probably gonna go to Slackware next. Uh, and if I can't get Slackware, then I'll go to Arch, and if I don't like Arch, I'll go back to Gentoo. So, so that'll be the progression. But uh, in this video, I thought I would tell you a little bit about my workflow uh, in i3. Now, I have done like a, a workflow with Xmonad, and that was like maybe two years ago. But I never did one with i3, and it's slightly different. Uh, than the one with, because then I was on Arch, and with Arch you don't really do a whole lot. Uh, you don't need to have as many screens open as I do here. So the very first one, um, uh, it, usually I dedicate that to uh, my web browser. So either Qt Browser, most likely, or Firefox. I'll get into why I have two of them. So this one, I you know just do YouTube uploads, watch YouTube videos, stuff like that. Second one is where a lot of people get impressed with my screenshots that I do. So what I do is I do two uh, two screens like that. I put WeChat on the right hand side. I go down horizontally and then on the left hand side this is where it gets a little uh, unique to say the least so I do three down and then I do this top side so what I'm going to do is put dstat here tty clock which I have an alias for then I have slurm slur that's another and then down here, I do, do HTOP or ATOP. And then so for this one, as I'm talking with people, I do like my updating and stuff like that. So the third one, I try to, it's sort of a miscellaneous, but normally I just do, I usually just check my mail with MUT. And uh, so I have it automatically go through. Or, if I am doing an up update, I go to something similar to this. This would be to follow. So this would be the fetch. This would be the glop, which is awesome because it will tell you from past compiles if I need to do... Uh, how long it took last time. So you can get a kind of an estimation on how long, say, LLVM took or GCC or the Qt web kit or web browser or whatever you want. So it's very handy. And then here is just the regular emerge log. Most likely I can probably eliminate this because this does tell me how many packages I have and I have total and what number I'm on, but so does this one. But this one's a little bit more functional just because it does the estimation of time. So that's one one of them. The other one is I do Firefox. Now recently, uh, when I first joined or first switched over to Gentoo, I actually wanted to get into the project. So I actually joined last year the Gen 2 security uh, project. So I had to stop because of you know work and family and stuff like that so I've recently redone that. So I'm trying to reduce the, this a little bit but normally to find like bugs that the packages we have I open up my Twitter I open up this 
and then there's a program called PyBugs. So what I can do is say bugs uh, searched to security at gentoo.org. And then you can leave that. I think it's just one dash, actually. Oh, I forget it. But it just tells you where like all the bugs that Gentoo has open, which ones are still open, which ones are confirmed, which ones in progress. So what I do is go through those, look at it, and then make sure that, like, see if the bugs are needing to be updated, closed, whatnot. So with my Twitter account, there's a there is a group called CVE, which stands for Common Vulnerability and Exposures. Let me close this side. So what this does is it's a, a group of organization, I believe, uh, that does like any issues. So like in this one, issue was discovered in Wavepack 5.1.0. So if there was a bug for it if Gen 2 serviced this, which I, I don't think it does. And I would search for it under the Gen 2 bugzilla. Then I would submit the bug and then we would get to it as quickly as possible. So this is kind of what I do right before I go to bed. It's pretty simple. However, like later on when you're searching for bugs it can get a little challenging because there's so many variety of types of bugs instead of doing this. So that's what I, so those are the kind of workflows for my third, uh, my third virtual workspace here. Fourth one, I either do Ranger or I do Thunar. Mostly the Thunar is here because if I ever plug in a external USB and I want to like as a backup, keep some of my configs up to date. That's why I use that. But most likely, I um, I do this, and then I have some of the videos here. A lot of LGR, which I do like. So that's the fourth one. Fifth one, whenever I have Steam open, I guess I can show you some of the games I have briefly. I don't really play as much. That's why I've sticked to i3 or Hoopsloofed or Herb Sloofed because it does play out of the box. But when I was on Xmonad, uh, if you guys remember the uh, if you remember the issues that I was having, Xmonad doesn't work too well with Steam games. So if I decided to get rid of Chentu or Steam, I may go back to Xmonad. It's really pretty good but i3 is pretty simple and I have uh, so those are pretty much it the tenth one normally I use when I record my videos here um, I'll let me show you the uh, some of the unique features of my i3 config actually so what I do is I completely sorry so what I did was completely Re well, I wouldn't say rewrote, but redid the key bindings for i3. That it's very similar to Vim controls. So like in, uh, you can make it like that in Awesome or in I, d I did make it into Herbsluft, and I believe Xmonad, but I need to look at my configs for that one. But pretty much the H is the horizontal split and V was the vertical or sorry reverse that V was the horizontal and H was the vertical however with H and Vim controls if you don't know H is to go left so I had to rewrite going down vertically as B and the horizontal split would be V and then same thing here with the right and left, H left, J down, K up, L right. 
I could show you what the default one looks like right next to here. Let me go down fix ls cdi3 so fin config alright so pretty much it's the same we're in the same area here so if you look on right here j is to focus left k is to go down l is to go up and semicolon was to go right I could not get used to using the semicolon. I always forget which direction it was. So changing the config to support to for me to make it more Vim-like was a huge step up. So now if we go back here, let me uh, do some borders here for you. Why? Y, down, down, Y. Okay, so as you can kind of see the borders around here, so say I am in the clock here, I want to go to the D stat, so I would just say mod K, sorry. So if I go mod K, this is where it got weird. Okay, let's make up a new thing here. And then, uh, I don't know, do stat. So if I wanted to go over to the right, I would say mod L. Then move to the left, it's mod H. So if I go down, if I wanted to go up, it would be mod K. To go down, it would be mod J. So it is very Vim-like, and I've it did take me a little bit because the H was used a lot more often than I thought, than just the horizontal splitting and the semicolon and everything. So those are my unique, uh, well, I would say unique. And then the Conkey, I had to rewrite my Conkey or my .conky rc file. I'll show you that. So I had an old version of it that it would work on on void, slackware, and arch, but for whatever reason went during an update with Gentoo, I would get a red error message here. So let me show you what it looks like now. So I say vim conky rc. So this whole thing had to be rewritten. So the conky.config is new and you had to actually say equal false instead of background is no out of, out of console is yes. Stuff like that was in my old config but this time it was so you had to actually make it more like a like a program that you're writing and now the conky.text equals bracket bracket I did not have this bracket here and it would air out so but for the most part uh, a lot of the text that you see here is the same as from my i3 conkey video just minus like I just modified it a little bit so I was reading in the uh, like a lot of forums and stuff trying to figure this out that it was supposed to read the old syntax but it didn't for some reason so but pretty much that is my whole workflow my background is nitrogen uh, if I wanted to listen to music I can do and uh, say music it's NCMPP or I do have Pandora so that would be piano bar which I do listen to more often than my playlist. Uh, I still, unfortunately, I have my Spotify attached to my Facebook account. So I'm trying to figure a way out to get an actual username than uh, relying on Facebook so then I can use Mopedi. So 
I think there was a way, someone told me there was a way to get a brand new username, but when I looked in, inside the configs, it was telling me that, no, there's no way to do it, that I would have to close, like delete the current username and create a new one. But I don't want to do that because I have some custom playlists and all the playlists that I listen to. So, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to go a little bit more terminal-ish, especially with uh, my Twitter here. Uh, probably do terses or something like that. And I do have, or and also probably a Reddit client. Um, I forget what it was called. I think I forget what the program is, but you can do it in the terminal. So, but I'll let you guys know if I can get those issues with void, um, get those issues with void uh, working. For the most part, it went fine, except I did have an issue with the Wi-Fi getting all that set up like I did with the laptop. But it, and now I'm just having issues for Thunar to see the USB stick. So, like, this will be kind of brief what my issue is. So I've been following their wiki guide for auto mounting. And you have to have your X in it RC file very similar to the CK launch dash session dbus launch, stuff like that. However, when I put it into my desktop, X does not start. However, when I did it with my spare laptop, X would start fine. I do have all the video drivers installed. I just don't know what's going on. Other than that, it's rock solid. It, I only have like, let me see here. I only have um, 608, and that's with i3. So I don't know what's going on with it. If anyone has an idea, uh, please let me know. But I, again, I followed the wiki guide verbatim and it still doesn't work. And I just, I'm getting tired of fighting with uh, like a, an operating system just to get base, like basic functionality. So it does work in Gentoo and, I, and Arch. And I'm sure it does with uh, Slackware. So I may have to say a no-go for Void, at least on my desktop. I'll probably use it as a backup on my laptop here uh, in case I do get too busy uh, with the new baby and everything. So we'll see. Um, but if you guys have any questions about my workflow or have any suggestions for videos, I'll try to make them. Again, getting kind of busy preparing for you know the baby and everything. So I will, you guys have a good weekend. I'll talk to you later.